Okay, today we want to continue on our Johnny's Essential Oils series. Haven't done one of these for a while, and it's time to change our transmission hydraulic fluid. Hey, if you're near the 50 hour, or 200 hour, or 400 hour, or 600 hour, you get the picture. If you're near any of those service intervals, look in the description of this video, and there will be a link there to tractortimewithtim.com that will show you all of the necessary parts to be able to do your service. If you'll click those links, you'll get discounted purchase price from greenfarmparts.com. It'll go ahead, it'll add it to your cart. All you have to do is check out. That's a very good way to get your uh, maintenance supplies for these services. Know that you're getting the right thing and get them at a discount. So check it out. If you want to do it on your own, just go to greenfarmparts.com and enter the coupon code TTWT at checkout. Hey, a news flash here. January is Green Farm Parts semi-annual filter sale. So you get 12% off plus the TTWT discount. Um, I can't tell you the total, but it is the best sale of the year. It's a great time to buy filters uh, for any John Deere equipment. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Now the first time I did this service, I took the left wheel off. That's what everybody says to do, take the left wheel off. That gives you real easy access to that transmission screen that has to come out on this side. So taking the wheel off wasn't that big a deal then. But if you've known me very long, you understand that I'm pretty lazy. And this time, it looks like a bigger job. I've now got fluid in the tire. Okay, So I've been dreading this for a little while. How am I going to do this with fluid in the tire? I also have that wheel weight on. So one choice is to take the wheel weight off take the tire off with fluid in it which is uh, probably a hundred pounds of fluid plus the I don't know forty pounds of tire and rim fifty pounds something like that and try to wrestle that thing around and get it back on another approach is probably what I would consider the lazy man's approach and that is to see if I can get this screen out and do the work without taking the tire off at all so I'm gonna try that approach why not I've heard it can be done and I'm gonna give it a try it seems to me like we ought to be able to do that if we can make that work, one of the advantages of that approach is I won't need any jack. So what I'm doing right now, I do have to raise up the, the tractor. My oil pan would slide under the tractor uh, with it on the, on the ground. That shows how little ground clearance these guys have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive it up on these blocks on the back. And then on the front, I'm going to use the loader to lift it up. And then I'll put some blocks under the front tire. You might say, well, why do you need it up on the front? I, I wouldn't actually have to have it up on the front, but I feel like it's best to have it up on the front so that I can get the, all the oil to drain out of the transmission. Otherwise, it'll want to lean away from the drain hole and some of the oil will stay in there. Okay, let's first figure out where all the necessary pieces are. Kind of get a lay of the land here as to what we're going to be doing. We're going in from the back of the tractor at this point. I'm right under the drawbar. Yes, this is the drawbar that I want to replace. This is the plate that I want to replace with the heavy hitch drawbar. Over here, this is where the screen is. I'll have to take this rubber hose off here, pull it up, get it out so that I can then loosen. This is an Allen head wrench, right? Or Allen head bolt right here. I'll have to loosen that up. It's a little hard to get to because of the backhoe frame. But it's doable. So then I'll pull that out, and it's going to have a long magnetized screen that goes all the way across here. And that's what we hope that we will be able to pull out without the tire getting in our way. Okay, over here, moving a little more to the right. Point the camera upward a little bit more. Right here. That is the drain plug for the hydraulic fluid. Okay. And moving forward a little bit further, I can't reach it from here. But we should be able to see the filter. Those are the three things we have to get to for this task. So the first thing we want to do is remove the drain plug. And let the oil drain out. We'll do that and we can just take some time. I find that doing the actual project is not so hard. 
but trying to get video of it sometimes is a very interesting challenge. So I've got a 13 millimeter socket here with the longest ratchet I've got to see if I can reach in there and do that without getting in the way of the camera. So I'm going to try to break this loose. Now I've got it broken loose, and I need to move everything back a little bit because I'm afraid the oil's not going to hit the pan. Okay, I have a towel ready. Now, one key point that I didn't mention earlier is you have to make sure your oil pan is big enough for this. Uh, I had to search a while to find an oil pan that would hold four gallons. There's four gallons of fluid, and it's all going to come out of here, and you want to be prepared for that. So. I'm actually holding this plug in the best I can until I get it fully unscrewed. To see if I can keep from drenching myself. Okay, I believe it's out. Here we go. No, maybe not. There is a washer on it, so here it comes. Looks totally clean, doesn't it? I changed it right at 50 hours the first time, right on schedule. But this is not where you're going to see the dirt. The dirt will be around the magnet, around the screen. I probably should open the vent hole at the top here. Okay, now we're under the tractor. We're looking from the front to the rear, just to give you some perspective. When I first look under here and I see all this uh, grime and greasy dirt here, it makes me wonder if I've had some sort of a leak. I'm a little surprised that it's quite so grimy under here. But having said that, I've never seen a drop of oil on the ground. So not even one drop, and I watch closely because I'm always particular about my shed floor. Okay. Go get me a towel and see if I can do this by hand. I actually got a filter wrench I showed you on an earlier video, but this filter won't work with that wrench. It's totally round on the top. I was hoping to let that entire filter drain before I took it off. Ah, maybe it's slowing down. Okay, I'm going to lower this auto connect piece down and eventually it's going to fall out. Okay. Here's the new filter, just like the old one. I've already cleaned that out under there where we saw the dirt and all. Cleaned out all the filter base on that. So what do we need to do to prepare this filter? Typically we put just a little bit of grease right around here. Just a little bit of clean grease. Doesn't have to be much. Okay, I've cleaned that filter base the best I can. I got those threads cleaned. I, I cleaned inside the, the cast there where some dust had fallen in. So I cleaned inside. I cleaned this nice filter base there that it's got. I think it's all in good shape. There's a lot of dust and dirt up over there to the side, but I don't believe I'm going to disturb that any further. So I think we should be fine, ready to put this new filter on. This is an error on my, an unforced error as they might say. I should have taken this auto connect component down. I wouldn't have really had to take it totally off, but I could have taken it down. It wasn't, it isn't that hard to do and it would have been a lot easier to do that. Part of the theme here was what's the laziest approach we can do this? What's the least we can take off to get the job done? And that's what we're accomplishing right here. Go much easier. Okay, so now we watch right back here and it spins real easy here for a while and then you will feel 
the gasket contact the base right there. Okay? So it just contacted the base. And they say to, to turn it about a half or three quarters of a turn after the gasket contacts the base. There's half of a turn, and that should be enough. You don't want to put them on there as tight as you can get them, because they'll be hard to get off. Just tight enough that they don't leak. Okay, we'll start by taking this hose. See if we can take the hose clamps loose here and down here, and slide the hose up, up the way here. I remember one of the challenges on the 50-hour service was just the way the these hose clamps were uh, positioned. They were hard to reach with my pliers. So this time, I when I put them back on, I tried to leave them positioned so they were easier for me to work with. Now I banged my head the first time on the three-point hitch here. Ouch. Okay, so I'm going to grab them. Grab that with this set of pliers. And I'm going to try to pick up with this screwdriver. Hose clamps are loose. Ah, oh, the twisting action is what made that come a little better. I hope you can see this from your angle. Okay, now the hose is up sufficiently far that it's disconnected from a little. elbow and everything that holds that screen in. Okay, so the way this particular Allen wrench is made, of course it's meant for a 3H drive socket, but the end of it there's 6 millimeter. the next portion up is quarter inch. So I'll try using my little quarter inch end wrench to see if I can get broken this stuff. Come on, Lucy. Lefty Lucy. Okay, it's broken loose. Now, I'll go back to the open end. Now this really, this, this portion of the challenge is not because of the tire being on. It's more because of the backhoe frame. So even if I had the tire off, yeah, I could see in there and work in there easier. But it would still be the challenge. Maybe you can see a little more. Okay, there it is. It just pops out, right? Just in time, Christy. Just in time to see if I'm going to be able to do this without taking the tire off. I don't think there's going to be any problem doing this without the taking the wheel off. There's what it looks like. So do you replace that whole part? No, we just clean it and it's actually got a magnet in it. Oh. See the magnet and that's what attracts all this stuff to it. Okay. Can you see the magnet in the end? Yes. So we'll, we'll, we'll clean all these shavings off of it and we'll actually take that magnet out. And so where does the shavings come from? It comes from uh, a lot of times the initial manufacturing, right? I mean, okay. it may not have been perfect and then, then it comes from the wear on the gears and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so you've had the tractor? It's got 191 hours on it. Okay. And I did this at the 50 hour mark. Oh, you did? Wow. Was it yeah. worse than that? or No. Um, but... Um, I've got a photo of it. I'll put it on the video here. But it looks worse to me this time than it did at 50 hours. Well, that's interesting. I well, would have thought... It's been a lot more hours. Okay. But I also agree with you. I would have thought it would have been worse on the first 50. That's why they have you change it at 50. Yeah. So you really just have to wipe it off? 
that's what I'm going to do. It's easier to wipe off once you get the magnet out of there, of course. Well, sure. So why do you think they put the magnet on the inside instead of just making the part magnetized, the whole? Probably cheaper. Okay. To have a regular rectangle magnet than some custom shaped. Yeah, I agree with that. So it'll be interesting to see how much got through to the inside. So there's the magnet. So just the small stuff gets through, see? Yeah. There is some stuff on it. No, that's hard to see because it's black and the stuff is black. If we go all different angles, there'll be at least one angle where you can see it without it a like reflection. like little hairs on it. Yeah. That's really what it looks like. Just looks like it's real heavy grease. Yeah. But we'll clean all that off. I know this isn't the perfect angle, but hopefully you can see in there well enough to see what I'm going to try. I've got this magnet here. It's probably a free after rebate Harbor Freight thing or something. Or free with any purchase or who knows, maybe it's a Menards free after. I guarantee you it's not a very expensive magnet. So I'm just going to stick it in that hole. And run it around a little bit. What's it look like? You got the first look. Well, there's gunk. Well, I'll do that a few more times. That looks productive. Make it a little bit longer this time. Wow, that's interesting. Look at those red spots. I suspect some of this is from the first 50 hours, and I just didn't get in there and get it out last time. I never thought of it. I don't think I even read about people saying to do it until after I'd already done that service. So Christy didn't just ask why I, did, why I left the quick hitch on and all the three-point arms. And I think I've already explained it, but I'll explain it again in case you guys don't understand. This was the lazy man's approach. The question was, what is the least amount of stuff I can take off and still get this project accomplished? Again, if you read your manual, it says to take off the left wheel. So far, I don't see any reason for that. Um, the backhoe subframe is more annoying than the left wheel, and it would be really hard to get off. So, it's just a test, Christy, to see, so if, see have... if I could do it. Hmm. My steel head. You're complaining about getting your hands dirty, but you're poking that stuff on my head. I just wiped it off. Okay, so we'll put this back together so we can put it in. We've got the screen as clean as it's going to be. We've cleaned off the magnet. We're going to put that right in there. They want you to make sure it's straight, not lopsided like that, they say in the picture. I'm going to thread it up through like this, just like I did our magnet, and go right in. I have that O-ring there I've got to get. There it goes. Okay. Sorry, I essentially have to have my hand in front of the camera to get that started. A lot of threads on this bolt. Hmm. Tighten it up the same way we broke it loose. Shouldn't have to be too tight here. It's got that O-ring on it. But of course you can't do it very tight with a quarter inch end wrench. So there we go. Okay, well, let's take that hose. It's fine. You're doing fine with the light. It's not that I really need it. I'm just trying to do the best for the camera here. Mm -hmm. yep, there it's on. Now, we got to put the two hose clamps back on. Try to keep them from being jammed together here. Get a worst 
catastrophe of the evening. Nice and hose clamps. There we go. There's where she goes. Okay, that's one. Good news is this one doesn't have to go near as far. Bad news, it's still the same annoying type of hose clamp. That should do it. Awesome. Okay. Already. Now that's that's the hardest part of the project right there, putting that hose back on. It was for the 50-hour service, and it is for this service as well. Okay, we have one more thing we have to do before we put the oil in. And that's right here. Don't want to forget that, right? Okay, you should have a good view of the drain plug there. Seen two or three drips already on my fancy concrete floor. Put that right back up in there. We'll find that 13 millimeter socket. And we'll tighten it. Okay, so right here, where we're going. That's our fill hole. It says 13 quarts. I'll have to get a. Why did you name your hole fill? I don't know. Puxatani fill when they come out of it. Oh, my. Some viewers are going to be very excited that I'm finally using this oil that's been here for <laughs> months. Well, at some point we're going to get some shelves where we can set it on the shelves, but we really didn't have much other place to put it. Okay, so this is what John Deere recommended for me. This is the High Guard. They recommended the low viscosity. I've always ran the regular viscosity, the regular High Guard. I'm going to try this because that's what they recommended. Honestly, I doubt that I'll notice any difference. Why would ago. they uh, advise low viscosity instead of the regular? What's well, the... this would be a lighter oil. For the winter time, this would probably be good. When your oil's not hot, it'll, it'll flow easier. Okay. Um, that makes sense. I'm not sure if it won't lift quite as much. I'm really not sure why you would use the regular viscosity if this would flow easier. So we'll see. We'll see if we notice any difference. Gotcha. This is one of Johnny's essential oils. Yes. Hydraulic fluid, high guard. Does it smell? It smells like a plastic can. I don't want to smell it. Then why did you ask? So you would smell it? You said it was an essential oil. I was just wondering oh, you think if Johnny's it smelled good. Oil, smell? Now, so far, this is the worst thing that I've had to do with the quick hitch on. Let's get in here to pour this. Oh, it looks like you have a steady hand. Oh, I can handle it. With this funnel, I can actually just brace it on the uh, little ROPS brace there. That's all, folks.